While sitting in my car getting ready to head out for the day, I decided to check the free section of my favorite online site, and to my surprise, somebody was giving these away not even 4 miles from the house. I just got them out of the car so hopefully we can get them running, and if not, maybe use them for parts. What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's projects include this steel trimmer and this McCulloch Brandon chainsaw. I just picked these up a few minutes ago and I haven't even looked at them, so let's see if we wasted my time driving to pick these up. Now in this video, we're going to take our first look at this trimmer and chainsaw and try to figure out if they're even worth fixing or if we need to put it back on the curb so that somebody else can deal with them. Now the ad didn't mention what brand saw they were giving away, but hopefully there really is a McCulloch chainsaw in the case. You never know, there might be a different saw in there and they just happen to have this case lying around so they use it to store it with. I'm going to briefly look at the steel first because this is what caught my eye in the ad in the first place. I thought it was the entry level FS38 because I only had the pictures to go by, but it turns out to be the FS45, which I think the only difference between the two are the front handles and a slight horsepower difference. After taking a look around, I don't see any serious damage other than it's really dirty from use, so I'm pretty confident that they didn't give it away because it's broken. I'm going to hold off a bit on starting the trimmer because I'm dying to know what chainsaw is hiding inside the case. Hopefully I'm not disappointed and it really is a McCulloch. The reason is that I don't have a complete one at the moment and I wouldn't mind having this one in my collection. After opening the lid, I'm happy to report that it really is a McCulloch and the best part is it's one of their smaller saws. I don't plan on cutting any trees down, I just want something light and simple to use. The only real need for a saw in my area is to cut up a large limb after a storm and that's it. If I can get this one working again, it should be very useful when we have another ice storm. Now there is some bar oil inside the case, but that doesn't mean we have an obvious problem just yet. Let's get it out of the case, that way we can have a better look at it. After getting it out, we can see we're looking at a very old saw. If this label is right, this thing is over two decades old. Now that doesn't sound too old, but the problem is, parts for older McCulloch saws are practically non-existent. You basically have to find new old stock, and if you find them, they're usually very expensive. Looking at the bar, you can see the yellow paint is almost gone, and you can barely make out the McCulloch logo. But the good news is that the black paint is still there, so I don't think it was used all that much. Another good sign is that the cutters are still very sharp, so that means they either replaced the chain or they had it sharpened before putting it away in storage. Either way, it's a good sign that they cared about it enough to keep the chain sharp. I was going to check the fuel tank to see if it was empty, then I realized I was checking the tank for the bar oil instead. The image you see here shows oil being applied to the cutter on the chain, so don't make the mistake of getting it confused for the fuel tank. The fuel tank is on top of the case, near the top handle, and has an image of a gasoline pump and oil being added together, to get a mixture of 40 parts gasoline to one part oil. Now after removing the cap, I don't see any fuel in the tank, so I'm going to add some to it, then I'm going to look at the starting instructions printed on the air filter cover. So this is when things go terribly wrong. This purge bulb is very cloudy, which is not a good sign, but I have to purge the air out of the fuel system to get fuel to the carb so we can try to start it. Now when pressing it, it's extremely tough to press, and after a few times, it finally broke. Now with the bulb gone, I don't think I'll be able to start it, but I still want to give it a shot. So unfortunately it didn't try and start, but I do want to try and manually prime the engine by putting some fuel into the carb's throat, and if it does start and runs for a few seconds, the carb might be able to purge itself, and we might be able to start it even without a purge bulb. Luckily it started and ran for about 2 seconds which is great news. Now I don't know if that's enough time for the carb to purge itself but I'll try and start it using the choke and see if we can get lucky again. So unfortunately it didn't start, which means we'll have to look at the whole fuel system for any problems besides having to replace the cracked purge bulb. At least we got it to run for a bit, which means we have a working ignition system and that the engine is not worn out. The next thing I want to do is try and start the steel trimmer, however I do want to take a minute and give it a quick cleaning with an orange based cleaner. Now you can just use water if you want to, but you'll have to scrub it with something a little bit more aggressive than just an old toothbrush. 
I'm not going to show you the whole process, so I'll speed it up. There are two reasons why I'm going to do this. The first is, I think it looks better in video when it's cleaned up, and the second reason is, if I ever wanted to sell it, I want it to look its best. The other items that were being given away was an older corded blower, a bad spare tire, and a stainless steel sink. From these other items, I can only guess that they were giving away things that were in their way and they didn't need anymore. I think it's safe to say they probably bought a new trimmer, blower, and a chainsaw this past fall and had to make some room in the garage. To be fair, the ad never said that the chainsaw was going to start. However, they did mention that the trimmer might need a tune-up, so I'm more hopeful that it's going to start at least than the chainsaw. I think that's enough cleaning for now, and I have to say it looks even better now with most of the dirt gone. If you were ever curious to know if your trimmer had a clutch on it, try slowly pulling on the rope, and if the trimmer head does not spin, then you have a clutch. That means the head isn't supposed to spin while idling either. You can also try this test in reverse. If you turn the head in either direction and it spins freely in both directions, then the trimmer has a clutch on it. You may have to use a flashlight, but you should be able to see the clutch drum spinning under the cover as well. So there's already fuel in the tank, and that means we just need to press the purge bulb until it fills up, make sure the choke is on, flip the switch to the on position, and hopefully it starts. If your purge bulb does not fill up with some fuel, there's a slim chance that the engine will start. So the good news is that it started and ran for a bit. The bad news though is that it won't stay running. So the ad was correct when it said it might need a tune-up. Now the first thing I would do to try and get this working again would be to put some of my own fuel in the tank, which I know is fresh, and then try the test again. However, I do believe I'll probably end up inspecting the carb for any issues. That way it'll be ready for the next mowing season. By the looks of it, this trimmer isn't going to take that much to get back up and running, and then I'll add it to my collection of steel trimmers to sell when springtime comes around. After cleaning it up, I'm not sure how much I could sell it for, but I'll probably price it a little higher than my other generic trimmers I have, although not by much, and that's because it's a curved shaft which is not as desirable as a straight shaft. You'll see the repair videos on these two items pretty soon, especially the chainsaw, since this is the time of year when a chainsaw is most useful. So my question is, if you could only pick one of these two items off the curb, which one would it be? A curved shaft steel trimmer or a long discontinued McCulloch chainsaw with very little use? Personally, if I had to choose, it'd be the chainsaw, and it's only because I don't have a small saw and I already have this trimmer, I certainly don't need another one of these affordable trimmers. Now, if it was a straight shaft lower end steel trimmer, then yes, I'd pick that one over the saw. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.